in the land where bald eagles ride Harleys on weekdays and dirt bikes on weekends. It takes a special someone to bite the bullet and say, I want a royal Enfield. Apart from internet forum users and people from India, where these spikes are proudly built since the 1950s, most people have absolutely no idea what a Royal Enfield is. So why did I get this as my very first motorcycle? Why not the Honda Rebel 500 or the Harley Davidson Iron 883? Hell, why not even a Honda Grom? Well, after watching countless hours of YouTube videos and doing my own extensive research, here's what I've concluded. Honda Rebel, arguably one of the most popular beginner bikes out there. Pros, it's a cruiser with low seats and it's not uncontrollably fast, which is relatively friendly for beginners. Pricing is reasonable, although your mileage may vary. Cons, it's got a pretty generic design. Only two color options, black and green, and ABS is an add-on option that'll run you 300 freedom bucks. All in all, it just doesn't have that much character in my opinion. The Honda Grom, a cult favorite. To be honest, it's what I was going to buy in the beginning. Why didn't I buy one? Well, because of the crazy used market and scammy dealers. And it just doesn't look like a real motorcycle. I mean, don't get me wrong, those are great little machines, but it's just not what I ultimately want to ride. Now this looks like a real motorcycle. The Harley-Davidson Iron 883, another popular opinion amongst first-time riders. Pros, it's a Harley. Cons, it's a Harley. Now I know I left out so many other beginner-friendly bikes on the market. Those are just the ones that I was looking at. Some may argue that getting a brand new motorcycle as your very first bike is a recipe for disaster. It would be a shame to scratch up that shiny new tank or even worse, put a dent in it. However, to a mechanically inept individual and first time rider like myself, I would rather spend the majority of my time riding my motorcycle than wrenching on it. So why the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650? Well, if you're watching this video, you've probably already done some research on the bike and know more than I do about the technical specifications. But here's a quick rundown anyway. It's powered by an air and oil cooled 648cc parallel twin engine, putting out 47 of the finest and smoothest running horses India has to offer. It's got a 6 speed slipper clutch gearbox and driven by a trusty old chain. The engine is caressed by a tubular steel frame, designed by the lads at Harris Performance, whom Royal Enfield acquired back in 2015. On top of the frame sits a beautifully painted 3.7 gallon tank, which will last you about 170 miles of range. Look at the brakes, front and rear discs. Don't be fooled by the Bybri logo, they're actually basically Brembo. And they also come standard with Bosch ABS systems on both the front and rear. Now that's value. The suspensions have plenty of room for travel, 4.3 inches at the front and 3.5 inches at the rear. Not the most but still very comfortable for your daily rides. Now let's talk about the design and what a design. That's how a motorcycle should look. Yes, it looks like a Bonneville, but the geniuses at Royal Enfield's Research and Development Center in Leicestershire triumphed over triumph. The KISS rule is their Bible and they took the saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it quite literally for the past 60 years. They've kept the same design and principles since 1960, and that has worked out extraordinarily well for Royal Enfield. And they will continue to do so, as in recent years, the Interceptor 650 is one of the best-selling motorcycles in the UK, Australia, and of course, India. This bike will turn more heads and get you more compliments than a sordid 1972 Porsche 911. Why that came out of my mouth? Oh my goodness. Anyway, let's talk about the performance and comfort. 47 horses doesn't really sound that impressive given what's out there on the market. But if you're on a bike that looks like this, going fast should be the least of your concerns. What you should look out for are the crowds of people stopping and asking about your bike and taking pictures of it. In all seriousness, it's more than capable of going at a pace that 99% of its buyers will never approach. You just really don't need any more power than it already has. 
That being said, it's an excellent platform and an open canvas for modifications and making it whatever you want it to be. The very first modifications people make consist of upgrading the entire braking system to a full-on Brembo setup, swapping for an aftermarket exhaust for a more aggressive tone, and changing the shocks for a more comfortable ride. The very first things I did was installing those crash bars to protect a beautifully hand-polished engine case and my ankles in case I ever drop it. I also removed the rear plastic mud flap, passenger foot pegs, and tidied up the license plate holder. My next modifications would be to swap out these hideous looking rear indicators and brake lights. Add a hazard light system. Yes, it doesn't come with hazard lights. Get some saddlebags and swap out the seat for a more comfortable one. Since this is my very first motorcycle, I do not have the knowledge or experience to compare it with other bikes. After watching hours of reviews and having my buddy ride it home for me from the dealer, I can safely confirm what everybody else says about this bike. It is punchy and nimble. The throttle is extraordinarily smooth with no surprises. It can comfortably take on twisty mountain roads, the occasional gravel paths when you get lost, and of course, it's more than capable of keeping up with traffic at highway speeds. To a lot of people, this is the perfect motorcycle. Not so fast there. We all know that nothing is perfect, and the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 is no exception. For them to sell it at such an unbeatable price, cost-saving measures are inevitable. For one, the brake light and the indicators are all plastic and finicky, and they're also very silly looking. The saddle is comfortable, only if your journey can be completed under an hour. Any longer than that, you will start to feel a numb and tingling sensation in your bum. The brake and clutch levers don't feel very high quality. Many people have reported poor braking performance after just a year of ownership. Another issue people often bring up is the position of the front foot pegs. Many complain that they are placed right where their calves and shins are when they put their foot down at a stop. Others argue that the placement is perfecto. I am 69 inches tall, and personally, I don't have a problem with the placement. They are right where I want them to be while riding, and right where I expect them when putting my foot down. My buddy who is 6'3 also didn't find the foot pegs placement bothersome. In my humble opinion, the pros outweigh the cons and I truly get why so many Royal Enfield fans are so happy and proud of their interceptors. Well, of course, it takes one to know one. Purchasing one here in the United States isn't as easy as walking into your local motorcycle dealer and finding one on the showroom floor. It's far from that. Matter of fact, there are only a handful of vendors here in the US. I had to drive more than one hour for mine. To put into perspective, there are four Honda and Harley dealers in a 20 mile radius around my house. Luckily, my one hour turned two hour drive did not go to waste, mainly because I decided to drive down towards San Diego on the Saturday of Memorial Weekend. But that's a story for another time. Here's what I paid for my brand new 2022 Interceptor with two miles on the odometer. It was $7,700 out the door. Another dealer quoted me $8,300. So shop around if you have a chance. The price includes a factory three-year warranty, and you can make any modifications as long as it doesn't alter the performance of the engine. But you should always check with your dealer before making any modifications. Servicing the bike is quite straightforward. First service at 300 miles, and afterwards, it's generally every 10,000 miles. It's always good to put in some elbow grease and maintain it yourself every couple thousand miles. In conclusion, I bought the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 as my very first bike because of its classic British design, the heritage of the brand, the built-like-a-gun reliability, and most important of all, the unbeatable value. If you're in Southern California and want to buy one of these bad boys, hit up Moto Forza in Escondido. I am in no way affiliated with them. 
I just think they're really cool people who are extremely helpful and most important of all, they don't try to scam you of your hard earned money. Give him a call and ask for Tony, he'll take great care of you. And that concludes my thoughts on the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. What do you think? Write them down in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.